Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Animation U. Today's guest is a Pokemon enthusiast, button up billionaire, and proud dog owner, Gabe DeMagiva. Hello, thank you so much for having me over on your show, Ryan. Um, thank you. I know you. you've been talking about this, so super excited to be here and uh, can't wait to answer some questions. Okay. For full um, transparency, me and Gabe are classmates. We both attend Cal State Long Beach. So, yeah, just, just just a heads up. If I make Long Beach sound like a really great institution that everybody should go to, then there is a little bias. So just, just a heads up. Just a heads up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so time to get into the nitty-gritty. Gabe, you know, I'm very curious to know, like, how you started as an artist or, like, was there a certain point in life where, like, you decided to chase this um career professionally like did you start as a kid who just loved drawing and then as you got into high school you decided you know what i'm gonna be a professional artist yeah so i think you know the typical thing that every artist says is that they were always an artist um you know i came straight out of the womb with a pencil um you know the, the, I... the funny thing is we made that exact same joke on like the previous episode actually really yeah nice. we nice. did <laughs> Um, but no, I, I can pinpoint like the exact moment I wanted to be an animator. Things do get a little bit more fuzzy, but it, I can trace it back down to third grade um, when we were having this sort of presentation where we just wanted to do a little, I think like one of those like trifold boards about like what you wanted to be when you were older. And I chose a cartoonist for mine. So I can trace it back, back down to the back then. And then going into high school, it was a little bit more different. I, I always kept art as a hobby, but I got invested with other extracurriculars. And I didn't even take any art classes um, back in high school. And so going into college, it was sort of like, what do I do? And I knew that I always loved art. So I went with architecture because I was also decent at like physics and stuff. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about animation back then. I guess it didn't click, but I ended up going to school for architecture. And then I just sort of felt limited by my creative process. And I looked at my sketchbook and it was like full of cartoons and whatnot. And so it sort of like clicked finally. And I've kind of been full circle with my third grade dreams ever since. Oh, that That's good to hear. I'm, you know, I'm sure like Kid U is proud of you. But I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another thing is, like, were there any, like, particular media that you looked at and that was, like, heavily inspired you? Or were you just, like, a freak who just, like, started drawing out of nowhere? Um, gosh, I think... Well, before third grade, I would I would make comics with my brother. Like, stupid little, little drawings and pamphlets. Uh, I think one of our characters was, like, a superhero, but he was, like, a fish. Uh, he was a fish. Yeah, it was like a fish with a cape. It just went around <laughs> like people. That's, that's dope. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess there was always like sort of a knack for doodling and sort of having an outlet for creativity. Yeah. So, like, did your, like you mentioned your brother, but I am curious to know what, like, your family thinks of you pursuing a career in art. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the typical like Asian family where it's like they don't want you to be an artist. That was that was never the case for me. So they've always oh, been wow. supportive of my, my career and they never had any doubts of me, like, I guess, struggling for, for money. My dad actually was like, when I switched to architect or animation, uh, he was like, oh, there actually is some pretty decent like jobs out there. So, I, you know, I, I've never really had to, I guess, prove myself to my parents for my career, which is, I'm really thankful and privileged for. Yeah, that, I mean, like, you hear about it all the time. Like, you know, we go to school with these people who, like, tell us, you know, like, oh, my parents are always questioning me. Like, they're not supporting me or, like, they're wondering, they're worried about job security and stuff like that. But, and it's yeah, definitely... If anything, a... if anything, I'm I'm worried about my security, but, oh. you know, that's, that's a different story. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. But um, but yeah, you know, like it's definitely a barrier that a lot of college students, especially those from like you know minority household, immigrant households, 
like they have to get over and you know it like you know i feel for them because like you know it's tough and like i've also been like very blessed and like very lucky to have like parents to be like oh yeah go on sport go go draw and do your thing (laughs) yeah Yeah, yeah, i get it yeah but now that we've got like you know a little back um like a little background to uh your whole artistic journey as we could start talking about california state university long beach and i guess your i guess it would be your college career overall and my first question for you is was the school you graduated from your first choice yeah, so for, for Oregon, it definitely was. Um, I remember uh, right out of high school, I pretty much applied to all schools out of state. I really just wanted to get out of here, you know? Uh, just some personal stuff that was going on. I felt like a fresh start was Wait, get the thing out that of, I needed to. Get out of Oregon, right? Is that what no, get out of California. Uh, California. Oh, yeah. okay. And so I, I chose Oregon um, because... That's when I when I went to visit the campus. That's what I liked most there. And then for Long Beach, it was also my first choice, uh, mainly because when I was transferring out of Oregon, um, they didn't have like an animation program up in UO. So I think it made sense for me just to go back down to San Diego Duke uh, Community College. Uh, and then go to school somewhere that would be closer to home and also closer to the industry. And so that's sort of my reasoning for Long Beach being my first choice. Okay, that kind of like, um, you kind of answered what I was going to ask next, which was like, obviously Oregon was your first choice, but the program there wasn't suitable for you. But I was going to ask like, what did you find appealing out of Long Beach? Because there are other CSUs that that I believe are like on par or even like some would say better than uh, CSU's and uh, CSULB's animation program like San Jose State, Fullerton, and you know I've even heard like Northridge has a really good program as well. So was there any particular reason that you chose Long Beach over say like San Jose or Fullerton? Not gonna lie, I I use that one website where it was like top 50 animation schools oh my goodness <laughs> and then I, I looked up long beach and it was like smack in the middle so i was like oh so, it, so it's pretty decent and I, I when i was transferring from my community college they would always talk about um long beach being a great uh like art program um and so i think my three choices were between long beach fullerton and san jose um i i sort of it canceled out San Jose mainly because, again, it was a bit of a, a drive for me, and I just wanted to be able to drive back and forth home if I needed to, because I definitely couldn't do that when I was in Oregon. Um, and with Fullerton and Long Beach, it was really just I knew some friends who went to Long Beach. They had already graduated, but they would always talk about how they had a good time there. So I think it, w- it was really an either or thing with Long Beach or Fullerton, but. I think aesthetically, I was like, oh, Long Beach has a nice campus, so I'll, I'll choose this one. Oh, so you, you chose Long Beach through a, like, basically just aesthetic and a friend went there. Yeah. And, <laughs> hey, and the program. Believe, and, 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 <laughs> the, the program's good, too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, go beach. Yeah. Okay, so, like, so your track was basically that you went to community college in San Diego, mm-hmm. and you went to the University of Oregon decided like hey this isn't right for me and then you came down to long beach no it was actually i started off at university of oregon oh okay. and i went back to community i went to community college because uh, i i couldn't transfer straight to long beach i, I needed like credits or something like that so oh, i spent okay. a couple of years at community college um and then i went over to, to long beach okay yeah i mean Another thing that people sleep on, I think, is like community colleges when it comes to like pursuing a degree in art, because a lot of private, you know, like, you you know, about like private university tuition, like how expensive it could get, right? Mm -hmm. It is very expensive. And, you know, a community college is a great way to get your foot in, like get that college experience or like get those college credits needed when you um, like for cheap. And then obviously a drawback would be like, oh, you're missing out on the college, uh, like the college experience, quote unquote, which which is like it is kind of true that like sometimes like 
one of the most important things that you could do at college is have like a great time and like make you know make friends have fun enjoy your like super early 20s as a student but at the same yeah. time like like there's got to be a point where you got to say like the tuition is just way too much to be doing that yeah for sure i i definitely looking back at my whole college experience i really valued the time i spent at my community college and you know there's a stigma between uh, for, for community college, like people who go straight into it or just people who go into it in general, that I don't know, that it's not real, like a real education sort of thing. It's not real. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> um, and so when I when I transferred from Oregon to community college, there, I, I, I was definitely part, part of that where I felt like I, I came all the way straight from high school to a full on university. And then after one year, I was in community college. But um honestly i would say it was like one of the best experiences of my college career i was able to learn like the foundations of art again i didn't take anything in high school so i was really just learning like new stuff every day and i made some a couple of great friends there as well and yeah i i think there's th such a problem with like accessibility with art um and 100 percent agree dude yeah so I, th I think if you are debating whether or not you should just go straight to university and just spend thousands of money of just doing like janet stuff i think moving to or starting at community college and sort of getting your foundations and all that janet stuff out of the way first and then spending all that money on those big boy art classes um at least that's what i did and yeah, I don't, I don't regret it at all. And that's good to hear. But now I have a, another question to ask about CSU Long Beach, which is like, were there any clubs or programs or extracurricular activities that you um, that you've uh, participated in that you feel like had a major impact on your college career? Clubs? Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, like, it's like, like nah, no big deal. You know, is there like a so certain little. club? Yeah, yeah, just a little small club. No, um, yes. So there was this club, um, and it was very near and dear to me. Um, but that's also how Ryan and I met as well. Um, I was part of this club called AFPA, which is the Animated Film Production Association. And sort of what this club aimed to do was create a short film um, every other sem semester or so. And some pitches an idea for a film, and the one that gets chosen is what we work on. And we mimic a sort of real life animation studio with our five production teams. So um, storyboarding, viz dev, character design, animation, and narrative. And so, yeah, I, I, I joined at the height of the pandemic because I was really struggling to make friends over at Long Beach. And so I, I actually hopped on as a character design lead because they were looking for one at the time. And so that's how I have met like a lot of people like Ryan, who was also like a Vista lead. And yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm looking out right now. No, that's fine. Take your time. But yeah, it was it was a really fun experience for me. I, I then the next semester after that, I moved on to being a vice president. And after that, I was eventually president for my final semester. And I think that was like one of the most rewarding and fulfilling experiences of my college career because it finally felt like I had a solid friend group, which I was sort of longing for ever since I started um, college at Oregon. And, you know, to, to be with people who you love, to making something that you love, it was just a very excellent experience for me. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, like, back yeah. at you, bro, it was, it was really wonderful being able to, like, surround myself and, like, you know, especially with, like, such talented people, um, and then being able to, like, dude, like, probably one of the main reasons, like, I've even started, like, this little, little project that I'm doing was because of, uh, watching our film, Crocodile Tears, everybody go watch Crocodile Tears on YouTube, I'll put a link yeah, in yeah. the description. Stream it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> stream Crocodile Tears. But, <laughs> but yeah, like, so Long Beach, they hosted a little screening, the first one ever since the pandemic, and once I saw our, me and Gabe's film, like, the film that we worked on along with everybody else, Rissa, Danny, 
Angelic. I, I could go on, I could name everybody. But watching a film go up and have people look, watching people watch your film that you've spent a lot of time and like love into is such like an amazing, like rewarding feeling. Yeah, for sure. Like, I just, it was so nice because we had been in production for a while with Crocodile Tears. Uh, we had, um, but during our first semester on it, we hadn't really nailed down a full production schedule. And so one of the things that I incorporated when I was VP was having a more set uh, production schedule with like drop list and everything. And so it took us a while, but we, we were finally able to nail down a formula where we could work on things uh, in a semester and also get started things for the next semester. Um, and yeah, I... I'm really proud of what we were able to accomplish with with that club. Me too. But regarding the club, you started as a character lead and then eventually to a vice president and to, at the end, to the president of the club. So Mm -hmm. for anybody who's listening and considering Long Beach, could you tell them about your roles in the club? Like as a character design lead, what did you do? As the vice president, what did you do? And as the president, what did you do? Yeah, so for the character design lead, uh, what I was tasked with doing was being sort of like the head honcho of uh, a team of character designers. And what we would do is each week we'd sort of be assigned a task for the film itself. So let's say we have our main character that's like a dog or something. What we, What I would do is I would sort of bring this to my team, explain the narrative side behind this dog, and sort of what attributes that they would have, and also, you know, what style that we would like to to have. And we would experiment with different styles, and I would basically just sort of be like an advisor for them, and help the t- the team out with different sort of tasks. So we had our turnarounds, uh, costume concepts, you know, different expressions and poses. And that's what I would do. And then after that, after I would get the stuff from my team, I would bring it to the officers meeting. So the officers meeting would be all the leads and all our administration. And we would decide what things that we would like to keep and what things we could like work on. And so character design was really just listening to, you know, the, the concept lead and the narrative just to see what they envision and that's our job was just to create that character for them. Moving over to being the vice president, it was more of administrative and logistical uh, tasks. So I was responsible for checking in with every team just to make sure that they're on task for animation in particular, because in previous semesters, we had some troubles sort of getting things done. I made it um, sort of my task to be sort of like the production lead for that. Um, so I would create a schedule and just make sure that everyone's on time. Um, again, really more of the logistical things and sort of stepping in for our president when they weren't there. And then for president, oh gosh, there were so many things that I was in charge of back then. It was basically just managing the entire club, uh, keeping up with the the devising, um, setting up things such as our banquets and other fundraising activities so it it was basically running literally everything and it was probably the most stressful but it was definitely the most rewarding out of all of them oh yeah for sure um i know that anybody again anybody's considering um joining this club and attending long beach like what could they expect as like you know like a general member of this uh, club so there's lots of things i think The main takeaway that, or not the main takeaway, but a lot of things, but one of the main things that people typically go into this club is just to gain that portfolio experience. We really try to push our members to create something that they could use for the portfolio, whether that be for the BFA program or just for them themselves. And so there was that, and there was also opportunities for us to look over at your portfolios and whatnot. But one of the most important things for me, and I think for a lot of people when they join this club and they don't really know about it at first is really those genuine connections that you make with other people. Again, like I said earlier, you're creating something that you love with people who love the same thing. 
And so I bonded with so many people and I would make it like an effort to get to know each and every one of our members. And yeah, I, I think I think that if you were sort of looking for a, a club over at Long Beach, this would be definitely be like hands down the best way to meet other people, even if you're really shy. And also just to beef up that portfolio, you know? Yeah. Also, it's, a, uh, it's worth mentioning that it's, it's kind of a, um, a relatively young organization, right? Yes, it is. Uh, it was, I, I, I believe it was founded spring 2020, and they only had one semester in person. Well, I, I don't even think it was a full semester in person. Oh, yeah. It just shut down. Mm-hmm, I it remember. got shut down. And so when I joined, it was all online, and we didn't go back in person till the final semester, which I was president for. It's like a big deal for me at least that like i make the transition from discord and online to in person seamless and i i'd say it went pretty well cuz we we definitely were able to you know get a, a perfect formula down for discord but i don't think in the long run it would have been sustainable because communication is such a big thing when you're dealing with a club of like 100 plus members or so but yeah since you mentioned it prior but could you explain what the the BFA admission is like? Because I know at Long Beach there's a difference between a BA and a BFA. Okay, so the BFA is essentially a program. Uh, it's the Bachelor of Fine Arts program at Long Beach. And essentially what it is, it guarantees you classes for certain things within the industry. So I believe storyboarding and like computer animation too were like BFA exclusive classes. But essentially, the main difference between the two is that if you're in the BA or like just studio arts, um, you don't get those, I guess, specific classes. So yeah, the BFA is definitely at, uh, at Long Beach. There is a process for applying. If you're an art student at Long Beach, you're either going to be a BA or a BFA. And those who apply to the BFA and get accepted will have access to more exclusive classes. Now... One thing that, or at least while I was applying, is like as a transfer student, it is recommended that you take a semester to take classes and then apply for the BFA. But you could definitely like, you know, if the tap, if the, um, you know, if the skill is there, you could definitely apply as like straight up as a transfer to the BFA and then maybe get in, which like for most people would sound ideal because the BFA will add a year to your uh, college career. Yeah. When I was transferring, I was not aware that like you could just go in straight as a studio major. So I, when I applied, I basically threw away my first chance of getting into the BFA because they they do require that you at least take some of like the first intro animation classes. And I didn't have that over at my community college, so I just put in some, you know, personal animations in there. Uh, I was just sort of expecting to get in at the time, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, ego check. <laughs> Yeah, it humbled me, basically. Um, and then when I applied my second time in, like, winter semester, uh, I was able to get in because I had those, you know, those fundamentals down the ball, bouncing ball, the pendulum, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, falling leaf, heavy item, light item. Yeah, flower yeah. stack, yeah. Okay, so moving on from the, um, like, the BFA and, like, the BA degree, is there... Um... Did you take any like supplemental classes during your time at Long Beach? So like, have you heard of schoolism or brainstorm maybe? Yeah, I've heard of them, but I've never like participated in them. Uh, is it like those class where you're, you, you learn along with like an actual instructor that works in the industry? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, I, I never really took those. I just went to like YouTube and sort of like taught myself through there. Yeah, and I think I did like a little bit of like Skillshare just to see what it was. <laughs> the skills, yeah, like... I, I know you got that YouTube code, bro. They were all yeah, like, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I know. Um, it's kind of like an arms race, kind of. It's all like trying to absorb as much information as possible, and like being able to put that in practice. Mm-hmm. So I do know like schoolism and like brainstorm are really popular amongst college students now, so that they could kind of get that edge. You know what I mean? Just to kind of expand on the knowledge that they're already building. So, That's super cool. I yeah. I didn't 
I think I, I only heard about them a couple times. Is it like a free sort of thing? It is not is it... free. It does cost. Okay. It does cost a little. It costs a little money. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, okay, so it's basically sort of like a like a seasonal workshop sort of thing. Yeah, act, yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Um, I've seen classes for like what's it called, like character design, color. Like they even have like intro classes, which is super cool. Like yeah, no, that's painting. super. That's super neat that they have those. Um, I know that there's also like other, um, sort of programs and like discords that I've seen around like um what was it called I think like open box animation or something like that open animation I was a part of that yes open animation yes yeah, yeah, yeah. open animation there's also um you know since we're on the topic I think everybody should also get into looking into these communities uh, there are plenty of like discord communities like recently I've joined animations there is women in animation uh, rise up animation is a great one they offer like free portfolio reviews if you're a part of it. So if you're listening to this, you're an incoming freshman, you're like in high school, I'd rec high I'd highly recommend seeking out these online communities for artists. And like a lot of the times like they're focused on animation. So yeah. if this is a there, career that you're interested so in. There's so many, many out there. Um I think pretty recently I joined this one called Character Designers Unite. And so it's just it's just nice to have a community of other people. Um I can't say that I interact on it on a daily basis, but it's nice to uh, sometimes they'll add like tips and stuff in the different channels. So you can just learn from one another. Yeah. Now, you know, like since we're on the topic of community, I'm I'm hoping that we can lean into like how you felt like how many. I know mo a majority of your time at Long Beach was kind of spent um, online. But I was wondering, like, how you felt about the social scene or, like, like the sociability of Long Beach as a university. So I was wondering, like, did you feel included at your school or, like, did you feel like you stood out in any capacity? Yeah, so it is a commuter school. So what happens is that a lot of people go just for their classes and then they just go back home. Um, and it was sort of like that for me, like, my first semester because I didn't really have any other friends at the, the time again it was really hard to start as a transfer because it, you know people had all those pre-established relationships and whatnot so in a sense it was difficult for me to sort of um gain that sort of support that i didn't have until the end of the like my college career i can say that like some of my first impressions weren't weren't the best and again everyone's college experience is different so i want to emphasize that so, like, if you go to Long Beach, this isn't guaranteed to happen to you. But um, during my first couple of weeks at Long Beach, there was a person who, I guess they just really hated me for some reason. What? You know, they, they just, I, like, yeah, I've, I've heard this story, like, it's it's kind of crazy, like, because, you know, if you knew Gabe in prison, he's like a really, I'd say like a really hard person to hate. So I'm turning into a victim blamer and like thinking like, man, what did Gabe do? He had the, yeah. he, he must have done something crazy to make this person hate him. Which is it's no, like, like insane when you told me, dude. And I was like, what? Yeah, no, like, literally, like, all I do, like, when I get to class is just, like, sit in my little corner and just not, you know, interact with anyone. Um, and so there's this person in one of my classes who would, who came up to me one night when I was working in the computer lab. And he was like, I would be friends with you, but you're just competition to me. And I just found that, really, like, really funny, like, now. But, like, back <laughs> then, like, it really, like tarnished my image of the school because there was other interactions after that where it was just more of like students who just had really big egos and oh dude wait tell us tell, like i know like these are we could start with the bad and then we'll go into the good like so like yeah, yeah. that definitely sounds like a very uncomfortable and unnecessary experience did you feel like anything else like that happened afterwards um i don't think to me personally but just what i witnessed from the other some other students is that there's a couple other students who just put themselves on a high horse and really those other students are me i'm on the high horse <laughs> yeah no there's like the students who who just thought them of themselves so much more better than the other students and i, I don't know how to explain it's that's just like, super gross you know what i mean it's just gross 
And like, yeah, like we're all here to support each other. Like it's not a competition. Like I don't know. And so for the for the longest time, that in inclusion to uh, poor advisors, because our advisors weren't really the best um, at Long Beach, at least when we were there, where when I was there, um, it really like. Yeah, like I said, it tarnished my image of the school, and I sort of like held this some like resentment for it for a while. And I, f if you do feel that way for certain schools, I feel like that's a normal thing. Like you don't have to owe your school, like you know, like all automatic this. admiration. Like yeah, a, like admiration and, and praise. So, um, and then it wasn't towards the end of the year or my. My, I keep on saying this, but the end of my college career where I felt like an appreciation and that like, you know, it wasn't until I joined like AFPA um, to where I realized that there was like other like minded people out there. And when I was able to go back in person and, and sort of experience the campus and the people in real life, that was in sort of an eye awakening experience for me to, I don't know, I just held this vision of the school in such a, a low regard and i think you know the connections that you make as they say really create your college experience and so you know do i have loyalty to, to cslb uh probably not anything like i would Go come beach. back yeah probably like not like i'd come back with like full-on gear but i i did enjoy <laughs> my time at long beach you know now that we've got like some of the unpleasant experiences out of the way is there any like any moments that stand out to you that you found like you really enjoyed like maybe like i don't know like anything memorable that you could think of um towards the end of my freshman year i i did make this this one friend and thank god for her she was my saving grace and i think a reason why i was able to sort of what's her name come out angelica thank you angelica yeah <laughs> Thank you, Angelica. Angelica, if you're listening to this, I love you. Um, but yeah, no, she's sort of went around like the, the classroom a lot and sort of talked talk to other people. And I think she, she noticed that like I was sort of really like reclusive. And so she would she would make an effort to sort of like talk to me. And we would go out to dinner together. Um, and I, I really hold those memories into like high regard because like I don't know. The concept of someone just like wanting to be friends out of, you know, no particular reason. I guess that just like boggles just, my just, mind. Just to be friends, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then other than that, like I think oh yes, our, the beach bonfire that AFPA had. Um, this was sort of everyone's first experience seeing each other for the first time. It was like was that when no fall 2021 so we had just finished a production of crocodile not crocodile tears kaiju delivery service and instead of having an online sort of rap party we decided that we wanted to do it at, at a beach and actually we know that, that that was not the situation we actually did plan it to have it in person on campus but there was some situation that happened with like our form. And so we had to find somewhere else. And then we chose the beach. But regardless, like I think that was like one of the highlights of like my college experience. It was just getting to meet people in person that I made friendships with over online. Um and we just like watched our progress on our films at the time. And yeah. And then what else? And then definitely being back in person for my final semester was great. I think having that sort of physical support, I guess, really helps motivate you to really finish up your projects and whatnot. So I'm really glad, if anything, that like my final semester was in person, because I don't think I would have been able to have that motivation to complete everything online at my desk at home you know oh yeah i mean that's definitely like a fair thing to feel i feel like like as in like art students you know like 
I feel like we do need to be surrounded by like like-minded individuals and like just seeing you know people it, it, it's like a very easy way to get inspired you know what I mean it's just like seeing people work on the stuff that they like to do and like them cr- creating all of these crazy ideas that they have it's just like it, it helps you get into the chair and start working yourself you know what yeah, I mean? yeah absolutely um another thing that i wanted to ask was about the screening because you you've attend have you attended like um one in person before i have not that was actually my my first screening that i went to ever um so it was I mean, I was going to say it was cool to see everything like on the big screen, but I think during the first half of it, it was viewed on like this like 50 inch TV or so, something like that, because like the the light hadn't set yet, so we couldn't use the, the big projector. But regardless, it was really nice to see everyone's reactions. And there was a lot of people by the, the, the second one that we had. Um, and so just enjoy you know, all the progress and stuff that you completed over the semester. Uh, I think film festivals are such a great thing to have. Oh, yeah, 100%. Plus, it's kind of like, because they've started showing films from like the, like, while we were on lockdown and everybody was doing stuff online. Um, Yeah, so there was, I think, the first screening that we did last semester, that was the first time in like, two years i think because again the pandemic sort of shut everything down so for the students who didn't get to have like a a screening that was their opportunity to get one and so yeah it was really like a celebration of everything from the past three years also another interesting fact you know if for this screening um they have one every semester right i believe that's the goal yeah so they have one every semester they show they don't only show just like senior thesis films but they do show um like the work from the classes at the school of art at long beach so if you were in a character design class your stuff would be put into a reel and then cast up on the big screen so like you don't even have to be working on like a thesis film or anything just to see your stuff on the big screen and you know if you know to anybody listening like if your school or university or whatever they host a uh, like a film screening I'd recommend you go it definitely makes you feel like more within the community and it makes you feel like really like you're a part of something like even if you don't have any work but you could admire like the work that your fellow students have created yeah and just like bring a whole bunch of friends and make other friends and whatnot like it's it's a great like I know like the first hour they dedicate dedicate it to being like a mixer so you can just definitely like meet other people that you haven't even seen in the program before, which is pretty neat. Yeah, that part was super cool. But another thing that I would like to touch on in terms of like uh, Long Beach as a university is the professors. Like, what is your general consensus about the quality of the professors and like the quality of like what you're getting taught at the school? Yeah. <laughs> so again, it was like sort of the same thing where. A lot of my experience was spent online, so it was sort of hard for me to bond with my professors as well. Um, there, there was like one professor. Are, are you allowed to say names on this? It's up to you. Yeah. Okay. I'll also say like Soyeon. Like, uh, she was my sort of professor and um, my senior film sort of advisor and whatnot, and she knew the struggles that I was going through at the time. Um, I, the, my last semester was very stressful with me being president and sort of the first couple months I was commuting from San Diego. So the, it, it was a really, it was a lot of stress on me. So she taught me that like filmmaking is about like making us happy. And if it's not making us happy, then, you know, we need to do something about it. And, and so I, I actually didn't finish my, my senior film. I'm I'm working on it right now and trying to get it done for, for the summer. But no, she just taught me that like, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't finish things and you shouldn't overwork yourself because you have all these other things going on. Oh, that's, yeah. So that's, that's a good philosophy to have actually. Yeah. So that was, I think that's who I view as my favorite professor at Long Beach. Um, 
in regards to like what do you say like like how they teach as a whole so going off of that do you think that the quality of the classes or like the classes overall at long beach um actively and like readily prepared you to jump into the industry and like land a job yeah so it's 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 a difficult question because i think for a lot of people nothing can prepare you for sort of like putting your first foot out the door um and sort of really pushing yourself to get jobs in the industry i definitely think that there was a lot of foundational classes that i took that really opened my eyes and changed my perspective of how i do things so i'm really grateful for that but I, it's probably more of a personal thing of like whether or not i felt ready by the end of my you know by the time i graduated which i think in some aspects i, I learned a lot about like production and sort of leading things but it's you know it's always a different story for when you're out in the real world and i i, I feel like there's there's still so much to learn like i i, I want to just keep on taking up information and learning um because i don't think everyone's ever ready for anything if you want to get existential but you know oh, if you want to get deep on this <laughs> podcast about yeah. school yeah i mean like you know it's hard not to get existential in these situations especially like because i feel like this is a universal feeling especially as like art students is like we need to get a job as soon as possible because like this is like a like you know job security in this industry is very is very fickle you know what i mean like it mm-hmm. seems like a very hard thing to do and everybody just wants to like you know break down that door and like get in so i don't think it's like a crazy idea to be like in a rush but i also believe that like we should understand that if this is something that we want to happen we have to be ready to like wait for it to an extent actively wait for it like don't just like lie around and do nothing but like do stuff you know what i mean yeah for sure like like right now like i sort of gave like the decision on my i I made the decision to not really actively apply for jobs right now um because i i think that i should spend more of my time finishing up my senior film because that was sort of my goal for this summer Uh, and so once that's ready i'll you know i can submit that to film festivals and apply to jobs and i i feel more stable i feel than if i were just to like apply to a bunch of jobs and also work on my film like i I don't think i would ever get it finished at that point you know i think that that's a really smart idea actually like to just build up your portfolio uh, Mm um before you actually like go out and actively seek something but yeah i mean if you'd like to talk about it like we could talk about your uh senior film that you're working on right now yeah so i for the screen that we did i ended up doing like a teaser trailer for my film what what is what it's about it's about you know two childhood friends who sort of drift away from each other as they grow older and their whole thing is like collecting seashells at at the shore and so one day when our main character dev is at college he gets a a package from ellie who is his childhood friend sort of just wanting to reach out to him after months of sort of distance, you know? And so Dev becomes very, I guess, hesitant about reaching out because he feels like it's too awkward with the amount of time that's passed by. And so when he opens up this box, it's it's a shell that from his childhood friend. And so it sort of sucks him up into the shell and takes him to his subconscious and sort of reviews his whole entire friendship with them and we really just it's it's a film about sort of dealing with anxiety and relationships and whatnot so i'm working away at it right now and hopefully i'll be getting it done by the end of the summer or at least early fall oh sweet so everyone keep an eye out for this when it comes out it's going to be a banger so yeah in terms of like like coming back to school it's like when you did you have to like pitch this idea to anybody or like the maybe like um like the head of the college or anything for your senior project 
Uh, yeah. So for the for the senior films, what what it happens is that it's split into two classes. So the first class is spent really deciding on what you want to do, and sort of working on visdev and boards and really getting the story down. Whereas the second half is meant for you to work on production, solely production, um, and compositing and all that jazz. And so what's your task with at like the first day of that first section of class is sort of to come up with three ideas that you would like. And it could be about anything really. Like I don't think there's any restrictions because people are always doing different things. But when I pitched that idea for my film, this was actually an idea that I had for some sort of like story or movie way back I think when I was in community college or so. Um because it, it was a real thing that I was doing with. I was really struggling to stay connected with one of my friends. And I think as artists we always we often do things or create art that really resonates with us. And so that's what the film was really based on. And so when I pitched that idea, I, I sort of knew that that was the one I was going to work on. But some people go on not knowing what they want to do for the, the film, and that's okay, too. I think there's like different prompts that you are given to help you come up with ideas. But again, if you're in the animation BFA, it's not a mandatory thing that you do um, a senior film, but it's definitely it's it's a very rewarding and interesting experience to create everything um yourself you know yeah so when doing like a senior project for the bfa is there like certain other options you could do besides making a film yeah um i knew someone who instead of making a film they they did a, a comic which was pretty neat and there's people who do reels and then there's people who just work on portfolios. Um, but these are often cases where someone is working on a film at first and they feel that they can't complete it or they feel like it's not the best route for them. So they often go to them. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure if there's people who sort of go into the animation BFA knowing that like they just want to do a comic or not. But I'm. 100% sure it's happened before. Okay, so basically we just wrapped up on all the questions that I had. So did you have any like last words, some advice for anybody considering Long Beach? Oh, um, I think it's really important to, you know, put yourself out there. I know that we live in a world where like things are opening up again and it's so much easier to connect with people now. and. I think even when I was a freshman at Oregon, I would go out of my way to sort of avoid people, even though it's what I sort of wanted. It's it's a weird mental thing, I guess. But uh, I think like what, what they say about you get the most, wait, no, it's you make the most of what you get out of college. I believe that's how it goes, but th that 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 stands true. I think tr pushing yourself to things that sort of make you uncomfortable, and so yeah, definitely join clubs, talk to people who might, or talk to people who you think are struggling with making connections, and just really being a go getter, as they say, is is a firm approach to college. Okay. Well, with that answered, that is going to end this episode. And I'd, l I'd like to thank you, Gabe, for like coming on and talking to me, dude. It was a great time. And yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then I'd like to thank you, the hearty listener who's listening right now. Thank you again for listening. Yeah. Points to you if you listened the entire way. <laughs> yeah how do i should have put like a little uh a little thing but uh, like in the middle it's like oh if you're listening like for real then type pineapple in the comments 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but for real, thank thank you guys for listening and thank you again for coming out again. All right. Bye guys. Bye.